And what's happened is Charles, from playing on a sports pitch, had sudden cardiac arrest. We've been doing CPR. So remember, we're doing five breaths to start with, and then we're doing uh, 30 compressions, two breaths, 30 compressions for standard first aid. Once the AED unit arrives, you may need to do some uh, things with it, because often AED units, unless they're, I mean, here we're at a school, it may well be the AED unit is configured already for a child. But when we open up this unit, it's standard got adult pads inside it. So what we need to do is we need to remove these pads and then get out the child pads. The child pads, you can identify child pads because they'll always say on it, here it's a paediatric pad. It will also show pictures of exactly where the pads are going. The actual plugs are the same, it just plugs straight into the unit. And also the unit will tell you that we're getting paediatric pads in there. But with the child, we're putting it front and back. So one onto the front of the chest and one onto the back in the same position. The reason we're doing this is because we're getting better shock across the heart that way. So what we need to do with the pads is open them up. When you've opened them, you can see the actual pictures of exactly where the pads is going to go. So with these pads, you've got a little red tab here and there's a piece of cardboard on the back. And we need to peel them away from the liner. So we're just pulling it away. So we're placing it just on the chest, just slightly over, so it's over where the heart is. So we're just popping it straight onto here. With the other pad, it comes off in the same way. And this is going in the center of the back. So we're can, going to have to turn him over. So with this pad, just make sure there's nothing in the way. We're placing it between the shoulder blades on his back. Push it firmly there, and then we can roll him back over. Now we've got the pad on the front and on the back. The next thing we need to do is to activate the unit. Plug in cable, stay calm. So in this scenario, the pads are on, the plug's gone in, it's said to that the, the paediatric pads have been added, so we know that we're dealing with the paediatric pads rather than adult pads. So what's happening inside the unit with this one is it's changing to a paediatric algorithm rather than an adult algorithm. Other brands of defibrillator and pads may well have a resistor through. So what's happening here is the actual pads themselves put it into paediatric mode. Now a standard AED unit that you may well see in shopping centres and things like that may not even have paediatric pads in it, but we do need to give the child a shock. So in those instances we would use the adult pads. So if you haven't got paediatric pads you're going to have to use adult ones. So this scenario here it's plugged in, what's then going to happen? It's going to go through an analysing phase. It's analysing the heart rhythm to find out whether it's a shockable rhythm. If it's a normal heart rhythm and it's beating, it will say no shock advised. If the heart is flatlined, then it's no shock advised. It's only if it's in VF. Often with children, it will remain as non-shockable because often, as we said earlier, it can be a respiratory problem rather than a cardiac problem. Deaths do happen with children uh, and they do go into cardiac arrest and having AD units available in schools and uh, other play centres where children are going to be is very, very important. So if you've got an AD available, then you would use it. They would talk you through everything and they'll guide you through exactly what to do. If you haven't got an AD available, then you need to find out if there is one. It may be you've just turned up at a school and you don't know whether they've got AD there or not. In which case, ask or get somebody to go to reception and find out. If not, you're going to have to wait till the paramedics arrive. So we would, in that instance, just carry on with the CPR. Keep going with the CPR until the emergency services arrive. If the unit does say a shock is advised, then what we need to do is make, to make, make sure that nobody is anywhere near. The last thing we want to do is to be delivering a shock through the child and then someone touching them uh, or causing any problems. Not only will that interfere with the analysing cycle, they could also pass the shock through them. So when we're dealing with this, we need to put your hand over. Now most of the units will tell you to push the flashing button or um, direct you to where you need to go, and there'll be some kind of flashing light on it. So hold your finger over the button so you're ready, and then make sure that there's nobody else around you, and tell everyone to stand clear, you're delivering a shock. And then once you've done that, then you can to deliver the shock onto the child is then just push the button. 
So once you've delivered the shock, then the unit will tell you what to do next. And the way these units are configured, it will tell you to continue CPR. So you'll then do another two minutes of CPR, and then it will come into an analyzing cycle again. And it will analyze the heartbeat. And at that point, it will tell you, do not touch patient, analyzing. It will analyze the heartbeat. And if it is a shockable rhythm, it will tell you to deliver another shock. Or it might now say, no shock advised. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that you're wasting your time, it's all over, because no shock advised, remember, can mean the child has got a normal heart rhythm, or it's just a non-shockable rhythm. And that for that, we need the paramedics to come in and uh, do their thing to actually revive the child.